Hello everybody, in this video we'll be going over this olive rig that I've created. This rig is available for free on Gumroad right now, so you can grab it and check it out. I'll run you through what I did with the rig so you'll know what to expect when it comes to using it. So first of all, this rig contains five different views. We have quarter front, front, and profile, um, quarter back and the back view. The different views have the different lip syncs, uh, mouth charts. So we have front mouth chart here, and quarter front mouth, and then the profile mouth. So the profile mouth, um, in, you know, things may not exactly line up, but these are really meant to uh, they're they're meant to be able to just for you to tweak really to get the best appeal for your animation scenes So for the profile mouth, yeah, we have an interior uh, mouth interior for you can to move as well and Then if you like you can use the deformers on the jaw to You know move the jaw as she talks as well We'll go through from top down and I'll just briefly mention um, some things that you may not be familiar with or it's just the way that I like to work. Um, the hairs separate into a few parts. They have each have a hierarchy and some of the important ones they have deformer as well. The bangs have a primitive deformer so you can get some nice like a uh, animation with the different shapes. Uh, I'd like to talk about this hair piece here with the ear poking out. Um, so we have a deformer here and then we have an ear cutter here as well which is bound by the kinematic deformer, kinematic output of this deformer. So if you move this hair, the, this, the ear cutter will move as well. So you know, be aware of that. And if you don't like it, you can kind of unplug it, adjust the hierarchy as you as you like. But this is by default. This is what it is. Brows, eyebrows have uh, the former as well. Um, these are simple enough that you can get pretty much you can get any shape that you want with them. So I didn't do any other different poses for the brow. It's just you just have this one, and you use the former to use it. And if you lower the brows, it will cut into the the eyes. So it's up to you to adjust them and move the eyelash if you need it. So on the very top part of this eye here, and then also the bottom, I put a, con a hidden controller which you can click, and then it will give you access to the eyelids. So these eyelids, they have about a little bit of like a hidden control there, so you can you can grab them when they're at the default state. Now, if you like move them too much out of the way, then you you might have to go into the network and find it there. Cheeks, they got a little blush. Um, there's a one extra piece that you might have to find it in the network. I didn't create any invisible controller for. It's sitting, it's sitting on the left of the, this, you know, this cheek blush piece is the, uh, what I call blush, like main blush. So if you turn that on, you know, you get this like a blush effect. And if you render it, you know, they have a blur module attached to them. So, you know, you get a soft blush there as well. So we'll move on to the mouth. Mouth is fairly uh, basic. Uh, they're separated into mouth, upper teeth, lower teeth, and tongue. And the teeth do not animate with the changing of the mouth shape, so you have to do that yourself. And we have a variety of, there should be enough mouth shapes there for you to do majority of the lip syncs that you need. 
the one thing that you might have to kind of create yourself is um, the th sound. So if the characters making a th sound, you know, you tend to bite your tongue, right? So in the tongue cell number three, there's a piece that can exist outside of the mouth. The other tongue pieces, they they only they can they're constrained within the inside the mouth shape. But the tongue number three here, they can go anywhere. And that's how you can get the this kind of look. So we have a next shadow here. And um, if you want to close this gap in the neck and the head, the jaw area, you do need to use this, extend the neck shadow and that will close it. And if you want to fully open, just move it out of the way and so on. If I hierarchy up from the head, we end up on the neck and I can I can move the rotate the neck like so, but I didn't atta attach these pieces. So she has like a this like a neckerchief kind of thing. Um, so these are separated from this neck head neck hierarchy. I I, th I think that worked pretty well. So like while I was animating, I didn't have to readjust every time. But keep in mind, yeah, those are separate. And also if you hierarchy up from this neck piece here, or this collar, I should say, um, there's this one piece here that is acting as a cutter for the neck. So depending on, depending on how much how you hierarchy up, you can grab this whole collar piece and move it as well, rotate it and so on. This character has a shoulder piece as well. So in this arm, we can break it down to, uh, we have a chest area here. We can just move it out of the way for now. So we have basic body. Oh, if you want to grab the body, you have, might have to hierarchy up a little bit. So here's the body, which has a primitive deformer. And then you have shoulder right so uh, nothing too complicated it's just know that uh, if you hierarchy up from the arm you will grab the shoulder as well and we have a couple of these uh, blue dots for cutter controls these are fairly standard um, if you're used to them uh, I didn't try to do anything too fancy with them so they basically this one cuts the the arm line when it's overlapped with the shoulder or or and the body and then if we look at the back view or three-quarter back uh, the same cutter will also cut the body line as well and then the shoulder will also cut the body line so that's something to be aware of the arms have upper and lower. They both have primitive deformer. So yeah, that's pretty basic. And we have glove with the little cuff here. They have a couple different positions. Um, depending on your, your scene, uh, you might need to create them. Um, so let's take a look inside really quick. This is also fairly standard. I tried to keep this rig as simple as possible. So line art, you have line, color, you have color. Underlay, uh, I put this little, like an inside. And then overlay, we have this cutter here for controlling of the, the color of the, of the glove. So basically in this lower arm, if you can, if we take a look, line art has line, color has color. Underlay, I put this glove color right so so what this overlay of the cuff 
cutter is doing is just, just revealing the that orange color for the gloves. Moving on down to the hands, this is also fairly simple. Um, I have this cutter here just to act on the hand and also if you happen to put the hand underneath the the arm that same cutter will also cut the line of the the arm as well. Let's talk about hand briefly. Uh, the hand there's some I got variety of hands here. There's um, Yeah, I tried to keep the, there's some fun ones here, but mostly they're pretty basic. There's some open palm pointing and like, and fists. And some hands are one piece if they're basic, but you may notice here there, this is two piece, right? So we have a main line and color, you know, uh, and then the other two separations are in overlay or underlay or, or, or both. So this one is sitting on top of the overlay so you can animate it separately if you wish. But the real purpose of separating these are, for example, if the character is grabbing something, then you know, you can you can just like bump this up and have them have them actually grab an object and it will go between these two pieces here right so that's the real purpose and function of the separating the hands and let's look at this leg joint here really quick so you might notice there's some <laughs> there's two different kind of controllers here uh, I, I separate them into the the basic circle that we use it for other ones and these are main purpose is to hide the lines, right? These line ones, <laughs> I, yeah, the terminology is a little bit confusing. Uh, these straight, let, let's call them straight cutters. These straight cutters are there to cut away the the fill or, or the color part of the leg. Um, and I don't know, you might be asking like, why didn't I just combine them both? Well, there might be a situation where you you, you don't want both. And you want that extra control of exactly what gets revealed and not. We'll talk about feet a little bit here. Um, I try to keep this as simple as possible. So right now, like, um, there's nothing under, like, over and under, and this feet. This is just like a simple like piece that's sitting on top. Now this feet is separated into three different drawing elements. So number one the, is the main component here. That's the main one that has a, it's basically oval with a bunch of elements sitting inside. I separated those as well. So if you take a quick look inside, we have a line art, color art, overlay, I put the laces in there and underlay, I put those, um, the bottom of the shoes. And then we have this flap here that's just sitting on top of everything, which is fairly simple and then we have the I guess like cuff of the shoe so these are three parts and the one thing to note about these three elements they are synced so you know if you happen to duplicate one of them all of these other three will create a duplicate as well that are also synced so keep in mind. So back view, quarterback and back view. Uh, one thing to note that by default, if you flip through them, you might need to see death push this, this back to match or to make it work. So just keep that in mind. But otherwise, otherwise, um, yeah, otherwise it's pretty simple. Uh, you know, I could have made this work without the depth thing, but that would require like a lot more rigging and it will complicate things a lot. And the point of this rig was to keep this as simple as possible for people to, you know, uh, have easier way navigating what I've done. So three quarter front, um, there's a ear just hiding in the back. If you if you need the ear out here like for some reason, 
and it's it's acting a little bit weird and just just play around with the position and uh, you might get the result that you want profile is pretty simple as well um, yeah I mentioned the the mouth you if you look at this piece for example like I just mostly mostly reuse the three-quarter front mouth so these will need to be adjusted depending on the the action back view and three-quarter back um, so there's one thing that might be a little bit tricky is the this highlight piece um, so if I try to grab that highlight piece in the middle it won't let you because the, the highlight piece isn't actually there like it's actually it's on the left and the right so this highlight piece only exists within these two hair groups here so if you want to adjust the highlight at, for any reason um, just make sure to grab them from the either side so it, it doesn't really exist within this like a middle piece here same thing with this view so on the final note this rig is available on Gumroad right now so you can go check it out download it if you do any test animation with this uh, I'd love to see it as well and yeah so this was meant to be a like, quick and brief guide but uh, it went out a little bit too long so thank you everyone and I'll see you next time